kick it, Jackie Chan. Oh, Jamar Chase with the dive. You know, Garrett Wilson's wide open. Garrett Wilson, touchdown Barrett. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here in the World of Juice channel and welcome back to another episode in the amazing series that is the LA Rams 10 year rebuild. Last episode we finished year 2. We drafted our franchise quarterback in the draft. I hope he can develop his rookie season will be in this episode. I don't think this year is a year for us to make the playoffs still. I think we're still a year away. We need another offseason, another draft. And then next episode, I think, is when we really start to expect playoffs every single season, expect championships every single year. That's when we raise the expectation. But I think we still need one more season to get everything together and, and go from there. I think we're still one year away. But let's get into the episode. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Who knows what's going to happen? Let's find out. So if we were going to set our season goals for year three, I'm going to say seven wins, but that's my goal. I don't think we're a playoff team. I don't want us to be a playoff team, I wouldn't think. This is what the team will look like headed into year three. We will have Ogletree as the quarterback. Malcolm Ogletree, rookie out of Texas State, looks to be a very solid player. We don't know what his development trade is going to be. I'm assuming it's going to be star, but we don't know. He's 91 throw power, really good player. He's fast, fast enough. He's got good agility. He's a good player. I really like him. Obviously, he's not as good as the other quarterback that was taken in the draft, but we gotta, you got to do what you got to do. We have Antonio Gibson here at running back. We have Cooper Cup, Van Jefferson, Tutu Atwell, Quez Watkins as the receivers. The receivers. We still need a little bit of work on the wide receiver core. That's why I was saying that we're still probably a year away. Tight end is still kind of bad. The offensive line looks better than it did, especially with the two draft picks at the, the corner spots, at the, the tackle spots. So I'm hoping, and then with Duff as well, he was a rookie. Uh, or he is a rookie, I think. So we should have some good potential for the future. On defense, the defense I actually like. We need a couple more linebacker to fill out the depth. We I like the safeties. We need a couple more corners. And we need a couple more pass rushers, whether it be on the D-tackle spot or uh, in the the edge. So the defense is still not here. The, the team's not fully ready, but I think this team can win seven games. I'd like, to, I'd like to think that this team can win seven games. I do want to check quickly what are our draft picks looking like as we move into this season. So we have two first-round picks currently sit at 9 and 25, but we have three seconds, two-thirds, Okay, so we've got a lot of capital to move around if we need to. Okay. That's very good. That's very, very good. I hope that Ogletree can develop. That's the key. But we're going to go see how he does in his first half of his rookie season. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Let's go to midway point of the season see how the team's doing. Okay, so we're here at the midway point of the season. And I guess I was a little ambitious on thinking we were a year away. Because we are currently 1-5 and five on the season as we head into the third year. Uh, or as we continue the third year. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be getting that 7-win mark that I set for the, for the season. I don't think we're going to be there. But good news is, we have projected 3rd pick and 14th pick as of right now. So if that continues to go the way that it is, we'll have a top 3 pick in this year's draft to get another superstar potentially. I don't know what this draft looks like. I haven't taken a look at it. I was waiting for you guys. So if we take a look at the mock draft, mock draft number 2, we currently have... A quarterback at the top, but we don't really need a quarterback, but we have Ben Covington and Chad Greer. Okay, this is a linebacker class, plus Kevin Wilson. He doesn't really have the finesse moves. Okay, so there's some top guys on defense that we might need. Very interesting. Let's go into the actual prospects and take a look at who these guys are. So we've got Ben Covington. Who's this little freak? He's got solid to good speed. If he had elite speed, I would totally draft him. He'd be a freak of nature. But he's got A block shed, A power moves. He might be the guy nonetheless, even if he doesn't have elite speed. <clears throat> he looks really, really good. I'm going to mark him down. Kevin Wilson's also here. He's the one that doesn't have the great finesse moves. He's not the greatest of athletes. 
B block should A power moves. He doesn't look as good as what I initially thought. What about this other pass rusher, Chad Greer? I didn't want to put him on the list. I want to take a look at him. Does he have the crazy speed? He doesn't. So none of these top linebackers are like super, super fast. But he's got some good numbers. A block shed, A awareness, A impact block. He's got some good numbers. I don't think he's the top three pick quality. But what about this guy, Jonathan Gabriel? There's got to be some linebacker in here that's got like crazy speed. There's always a linebacker with crazy speed, but it doesn't look like it is here. What's the receiving class looking like this year? Anybody that's studly? Anybody that's stuffy? It looks like this guy is the only guy that's at least halfway decent. Kerry Thompson, a physical receiver out of, uh, what is he, Arizona State? Yeah, but he's 23 already, so that kind of worries me. He's got great to elite jumping, I would expect, because he's physical. <clears throat> he's got a short route, a spectacular catch. We need to learn a little bit more about him, but right now he looks to be the best receiver here in the class. What about this guy, Mario Charles? He's 5'9", great to elite acceleration, but only good to great speed. This class doesn't look too great in terms of just like the skill position, guys. Is there a crazy freak tight end? Ooh, there might be out of the Ohio State University. Jerry Hawkins, hello, sir. You could be the freak. Freak on a leash, baby. I'm going to mark you down so I don't forget you, but you look to be very good. What about this guy? This guy could be good. Will Oliver? You see, he's a decent athlete. His skills are pretty good. He's not a great lead blocker. There's a couple decent, interesting tackles in this class. Okay, another okay athlete. He looks a little better than the other guy. Jaleel Culver. We'll mark him down as a potential option. We can always move these guys around the, the offensive line, too, if the if they skills seem fit. Peter McIntosh doesn't look as good, but I'll put him on the list just because he, he could develop. I don't want to forget about him. Are there any guards that are super elite? Justin Jarrett. Okay, not the greatest of athletes, but he's not that good. Okay, so he's not amazing. This guy, Nigel Burks. What are you looking like? Oh, uh, I mean, maybe... There's usually a pretty decent center in every single class. And it's not this guy. Or maybe it could be. I don't know. I didn't take a look at anybody else. It's probably either him or this guy, Emmanuel Farr. Oh, it's him. It's Emmanuel Farr. Yes, sir. Emmanuel Farr is the freak. And he's in round three to four. Don't mind if I do. That would be another big time addition to the offensive line. We've got Corey Rich. The offensive line's not projected very well. But he doesn't look too bad. Corey Rich doesn't look horrible. I'll put him on the list. He could end up being pretty decent. This guy's a pretty solid athlete. We'll put him on the list. We do need guard play. And what about Brian Clay out of Oklahoma State? Okay athlete. He's got good skills. The top three guards look to be pretty good. What about Pat Bates? I didn't take a look at him. Pat Bates is not as good as the other ones, but he does look okay, I guess. He's not horrible. Who are you? Who's this little freak? George Lang? Not the greatest of athletes, but his skills are... They could be good. I mean, that range... That, that's a good range. They, he could be really good. I'll keep him on the list just in case so I don't forget about him. But he has potential to be pretty good. What about Mark Cutler? Jay's brother? Uh, Okay, he's fine. We're probably not going to take him, but he's fine. He's a fine player. There's nobody on the left end that I am even intrigued at even looking at. What about the right end? We took a look at a few of these guys. Oh, the pass rushing class is not there. We might have to look at free agency for this because this is not it. It is not it. We took a look at these guys already. Nobody's like super fast. There's not anybody on the middle linebacker spot that I like. Uh, I'll take a look at you. His block sheds an F, which throws me off already. His rest of his numbers are okay, but he's also got F power moves. I'm not taking a guy who has F block shot, F power moves. Any crazy corners? It doesn't look like... I mean, B zone coverage isn't, like, bad. But it doesn't look like this is a class for corners. What about free safeties? We've got Braden Butler out of Michigan State. He is a decent player. Hits hard. 
but not anything to like write home about. What about the strong safeties? So it looks like the defense is going to have to be something we focus on in the free agency period. Is there a kicker that's like absolutely crazy kick power or anything like that? No, he's got marginal to decent. Not interested in that. What about Wyatt Fox? Nope, his kick power is not good. I want a kicker that has like crazy kick power, like great to elite. It's not going to be Ed Fitzpatrick. Is it Cody Bruce? Cody Bruce, do you have it? Here we go. Great to elite kick power. Okay, his kick accuracy is a C, but his kick power is great to elite. I'm intrigued. What about Wes Doherty? Porta Marginal. No, thank you. How do you have Porta Marginal kick power? You're a kicker. I don't understand. Earl Goldberg. 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 I wish we, he had better kick power so we can just use that chant. BJ Hunt. Nothing. So there's one great to elite kicker, and it is Cody Bruce. I am intrigued. Tickle me stupid. I am intrigued about Cody Bruce. Okay. So we will simulate the rest of the season, and I guess now hope to be top three in the draft because there seems to be some good players, including maybe most intriguing that tight end. I am very curious about him. So let's go to the end of the season to the playoffs and see how this team does and see how Malcolm Ogletree does in his rookie year. We make it to the end of the season and we actually won four more games. So we went five and 12. The Cardinals did a little worse than us. But let's find out what the development trade is of our quarterback. Our franchise is in the balance. It is superstar development. He's up to an 80 overall. Malcolm Ogletree, thank you very much. Now, is he just, does he just have it? Or did he go up a development trade? Let's see. It looks like he just had it. It doesn't look like he went up development trade at all during the season. So it looks like our boy just had superstar development. I will take that. Malcolm Ogletree was superstar. The two um, tackles both had star. That's fine. I assume that's what they would have. Everybody's playing a little bit lower because of the morale. But I, I do like what we have on the team so far. Aries McCollum is a superstar corner. Did we know that? I think we did, right? I think we did. Kendrick is a star development player. I'm excited, man. I am excited for this offseason. We have a little bit of money to spend. I think we can make this work. We obviously didn't make the playoffs. We were kind of bad this year. Let's take a look at the stats, though. Let's see how our rookie did. So 4,600 yards, 39 touchdowns to just 13 interceptions in a rookie season. That is fantastic from our boy Malcolm. Good job. That's amazing. Rushing, we didn't really have a rushing... Uh, game at all this season but that's not really what the Rams offense is based on so 805 801 yards and five touchdowns for Antonio Gibson Cooper Cup had 1700 yards and 18 touchdowns that's really good Van Jefferson 853 and two touchdowns Quez Watkins had 10 touchdowns okay so Ogletree was just slanging that thing around the field defensively we had some big tackle seasons from Ernest Jones and Logan Wilson with 100-plus tackles. Brand Delpit was almost there. Aaron Donald was almost there. Sack leaders, Aaron Donald with 22 and a half is absolutely insane. Marcus Marsh had two. Interception leaders, Grant Delpit had three. McCollum had two. That's good. Okay. I'm liking what this team is looking like, and I'm excited for this this offseason we've got a little bit of money to work with we've got some decent draft picks i'm excited 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 i can't wait to to get to this draft man but i want to see what are our draft picks at now at the end of the season we remember we had pick three and pick 12 or something what do we have now we have pick five and pick 24 okay that is completely good to work with we can work with pick five and pick 24 but we need to figure out who we're going to bring back and who we're not going to bring back. So this is what the playoff bracket is looking like if you're curious. Titans and Bucks are the one seeds. Uh, Cowboys and Seahawks are the team that I'm covering with my camera on the NFC side of things. So let's get to the Super Bowl and let's see just what we're working with here, man. I am excited. I can't wait. I really, really can't wait. I feel like this offseason could change a lot of things. I did say in the opening how I thought we were a year away. 
the season didn't really lend itself to that, but with this offseason, with a couple extra draft picks, with the development of Malcolm Ogletree as being a superstar uh, quarterback, and he gets another upgrade here, we're going to go to, uh, let's see, we'll go to Scrambler again to make him an 81 overall. I feel like this could be a team that goes pretty far. I mean, look at these ratings right now. He's got 94 throw power. All of his accuracies are pretty good. His awareness could be a little bit higher, but it's fine for right now. 84 speed's good enough. Not great, but he's got accelerated agility. His change of direction is 94. I mean, this guy is a good quarterback. This guy is a very, very good quarterback. I'm super excited. It's going to be Ravens and Giants in the Super Bowl. Take your pick of who's going to win that. I am going to pick the Ravens. I'm a two for two right now on Super Bowl picks, and I'm three for three. The Ravens are Super Bowl champions. We've got a lot of money, man. We've got a lot of money and nobody to pay. So let's, let's figure this out. So the 2024 season recap, the Ravens win the Super Bowl. Lamar is the quarter or is the MVP. So George Honeycutt, the guy that we almost drafted or maybe should have drafted, wins the rookie of the year for the Dolphins. James Rudd on the Raiders wins defensive rookie of the year. Aaron Donald takes defensive player of the year. Is that the third straight year? I think it might just be, no, Brian Burns. Oh, it was Cooper Cup that was the two straight. And then Jonathan Taylor beat him this year. Doug Peterson, coach of the year, and Josh Allen is the regular season MVP. Okay. We'll be there at some point, I have I have to imagine. So let's simulate to the offseason, get to the re-signing period. I have no idea who's even up for our contract this year. I should have taken a look at that before we got to this point, but it's too late now. Let's find out who is even worthy of a contract. But first, got to take a look at the retirements. Harrison Smith, Cam Jordan, Cam Hayward. Darius Slay, big play Slay. J.J. Watt on the Dolphins. A couple t uh, Cowboys, Stephon Gilmore, Tyron Smith, Corey Lindsley, Levante David, Russell Wilson. Let Russ cook. He is retiring. Micah Hyde, Von Miller. Ooh, this is going to be another very good Hall of Fame class. There's some big name guys in here. Robert Quinn. Dante Hightower, Marvin Jones, Carlos Dunlap, Justin Houston. This is going to be a crazy Hall of Fame class. Okay. Any coaches? No coaches. But it's time, boys. It's time. What's the negotiations looking like? Who is up for a contract? It is Marcus Marsh, Aaron Donald, but we have a lot of money. So that's not as worrisome as it might have been earlier. And there's really nobody else down here that I want to bring back. Maybe here and there we bring some guys back. But Aaron Donald, let's lock him up. He doesn't want to be here, but I will give him a very player-friendly contract. And he will come back. Aaron Donald is here. I mentioned in the very first episode that Aaron Donald was the only guy besides Cooper Cup. Those two guys are the only people that were most likely going to be here until they retire. So they are back. At least um, Donald is back. And Ernest Jones went down to star or went down to normal. That kind of sucks. We don't need Jason Myers because we're going to draft that kicker. Uh, Chris Barnes wants to be here and he's not expensive. So we'll make an offer and he's coming back for a two-year deal. That's another linebacker depth. Uh, James Bradbury is still a star development corner, so we might as well offer him a one-year deal. He's happy to come back. Thank you very much. Then Tutu Atwell, we do need wide receiver depth still. So Tutu's coming back. Uh, Jeremy Rucker, I would like to have back. He's going to come back to free. That's, that's okay. I, I, I'd like to have him back, but it's not a big deal. We don't need to bring back any of these offensive linemen because we're going to draft those offensive linemen in, in the draft this year. And really, nobody else needs to come back. So we've got about $120 million, $118 million to spend in free agency. We can make this team really good right away. But let's take a look at this mock draft number three real quick. So they have us taking that tight end, Jerry Hawkins. I think out of all these guys... He might be one of the best players in this class. He looks really, really good. I don't think these linebackers are going to... I mean, they still might have like superstar development. They still might be pretty good players, but I don't think they're going to be as good as maybe the teams that are going to draft them think they are, but this guy, Jerry Hawkins, is going to be a stud. And we need tight end help because we just lost Jeremy Ruckert, so we do need some help there. And we need to give another weapon to our superstar franchise quarterback. So first off, we need to spend some staff points. Let's get in here and spend some staff points. Did I finish all of the head coaching stuff? I did, but I haven't finished any of the offensive coordinator stuff. So we will go here, add all this, boost the release, yada, 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 boost catching for that. Uh, we'll go with the boost awareness for offensive linemen. Make sure that's all good. 
Make sure that's all good. And we finally get the strength for the offensive lineman. That's one I've been waiting for. So we'll add up all these. Make sure the defensive coordinator is all good. Bada bing, bada boom. Boost the strength by the defensive line too. That's huge. Then we get the boost. The, oh, we can't boost the tackle. Okay, so 166 staff points really isn't that much when you think about it. We didn't really get that far in the... Uh, in the staff thing so let's go to free agency stage one of free agency is upon us please be a good class please please be a good class we need some help Amon Ross St. Brown is here and he's interested slightly Najee Harris is here and he's interested slightly now we're talking now we're speaking the same kind of language Tom Brady is still here at 48 years old maybe we bring him in as a backup Najee, I feel like I have to go Najee and Amonra or Amonra because we do need wide receiver help. That'd be another really good player to have alongside Cooper Cup. The offensive line, we don't really need to focus on offense line because we're going to focus on that in the draft. Defensive linemen, we do need some of these guys. But it's not like anybody's super interested in us. Except for some of the older guys. And they're not they're not really gonna help us and that'd just be a waste of money, I feel like. There's not really anybody at the linebacker spot. Jalen Phillips is interesting. And then corner, there's not amazing people here either. A couple decent free safeties that are interested in us. Okay, and then some kickers and punters. Okay, so we're gonna I'm gonna offer on Najee and Amon Ra. Because I feel like that is going to help us out a lot. So we're going to bump this contract up. Five years. A lot of money. Najee, come here. Najee, come home. Okay, we're battling with the Cowboys. We're going to bump it up even further. Six years. Six million dollars. For both the bonus and the salary. He's going to be making a huge bag. And we're still battling with the Cowboys. What are the Cowboys offering him? The world may never know. We're going to offer Amon Ra as well. And we're battling with the Seahawks for him. Okay, so we are in for a battle with those guys. I also want to offer Jalen Phillips on a player-friendly deal. So our targeted guys. We are in the lead for Jalen Phillips. We're in the lead for Najee. And we're in the lead for Amon Ra. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, are the guys going to sign here? That's not a guarantee. They could pick another team. But at least we are in the lead for those three players. So that's huge. Anybody else that I want to offer? I'd like to get like a Kenny Moore. I know he's 30 years old, but a player-friendly contract? We'll see what that gets us. That puts us ahead of the Eagles. We're outbidding them by crazy. And then maybe we need another, probably a defensive end, I'd say. But the defensive ends weren't like crazy good in this class. Bryce Huff is here. I guess we'll offer him a player-friendly contract and see what he says. Uh, looks like the Bucks are battling. So those are all of our offers that we can have in this first um, round. <sighs> We're spending a lot of money, possibly. I'm going to hit the evaluate offers. Please say that we got Najee and Amon Ra. Those guys signed. Are they signed to us? Najee, but Amon Ra doesn't come here. No, but we got Najee. That's huge. So we've got our franchise running back. Kenny Moore signs here, and Jalen Phillips signs here. So that's good for the defense. But Amon Ross St. Brown signed with the Seahawks. Ah, we lost out on him. That sucks. But we got Najee. That's big. And we're still working on Bryce Huff, but we did lose a little bit uh, with Bryce. So we'll go player friendly and then bump it up to about seven. And we'll see what he says to that. Because I could use a, a left end, and he's about the best one available. So we don't need a quarterback. Although, is Tom still here? I'll get Tom on a, a backup contract yeah give me a year of tom brady let's go to my targets go to the top 100 bryce huff signed so did brady we got brady but not bryce huff i wanted bryce huff more than tom brady uh where did bryce huff go he signs with the titans i didn't think he was gonna pick us but i could uh, i could hope a boy could hope so i think we're just gonna save the rest of our money and just go to the draft because I don't think there's anybody else here that's really going to make that much of an impact on our team, at least for this season. Maybe Dietrich Wise. None of these D tackles are really going to do anything crazy. 
Travis Gibbs. Uh, Travis Gibson's not going to do much. Maybe DJ. I'll, I'll offer DJ Jones a one-year deal. Uh, we'll see what happens. I don't think he's going to do anything. Let's see if we signed him. Uh, my signings. DJ. Okay, so we got DJ Jones. He's another D tackle to go behind Derek Brown. But I think that's going to be it for free agency. We're going to go to the next week. <sighs> Man, not getting Amara hurts a little bit because we are in need of wide receivers. Having him and Van Jesser Jefferson with Cooper Cup would be pretty good. But we'll have to wait and see. So let's see. Mock draft number four has us taking Jerry Hawkins. So ooh, a quarterback has jumped into the ranks. But it's still these top three guys are kind of the fan favorites. Jerry Hawkins, though. He's going to be our guy. Jerry Hawkins looks like the real deal. He looks like a fantastic player. We're going to simulate to the draft. It's go time, boys. It is go time. I think we had a very successful free agency bringing in Najee Harris, bringing in Kenny Moore and DJ Jones and Jalen Phillips on the defense. I think that's going to help out the defense a little bit. But in this draft, we need to focus on the offensive line and on the offense in general because the offense seems to be the best pieces of this draft. So we still have money in, in cap space, so we're still good there. But let's go to our favorites and kind of get our game plan. So Jerry Hawkins is going to be our pick. We're going to remove Ben Covington from the free, or from the favorites because he's not really that he's not that guy. So Jerry Hawkins is our first round pick. Maybe we trade our second first round pick depending on how things go. Maybe if these two guys are here, maybe we take one. I don't know. But we are certainly taking Emmanuel Farr. And we might take another guard. And we're certainly taking Cody Bruce. So it's going to be a lot of offensive line. And it's going to be Jerry Hawkins. I like the, the plan here. These two guys, Emmanuel Farr and Jerry Hawkins, are guarantees. Everybody else is up for grabs depending on how the, the landscape of the draft goes. So we've got our plan. We are ready to go to the draft start drafting yes sir i am ready pause the draft number one overall pick throw your bets in there who's it gonna be it's gonna be ben covington out of iowa all right second pick in the draft the jets take chad greer the eagles are up next they take kevin wilson so right now it's following the path but do the saints take a quarterback here or do they take Romeo Wall, who I saw in a previous mock draft, he was up at the top. Do they take Marion Riley out of Portland State? I wish that Madden would give actual good colleges the quarterbacks that are high in the draft. Here we go. Pick four is Keenan Session, left tackle from Notre Dame. It is time, boys. Make your selection. We are taking Jerry Hawkins from the Ohio State University. He looks like an absolute freak of nature. He is six foot three 22 years old great speed elite agility elite change of a direct, uh, change of direction this man looks like an absolute animal not the greatest not a generational player by any means but he looks fan freaking tastic and we need a tight end weapon and we just got malcolm ogletree maybe the best tight end in the class 88 acceleration 80 agility 85 change of direction 85 speed 84 strength he looks like an absolute a monster Thank you very much, Jerry Hawkins. Welcome to the team. And now we will wait until our next pick. There goes Marion Riley to the Packers. Maybe the next Aaron Rodgers. Who knows? Brian Clay. Ooh, that's one of our offensive guard picks. Okay. So we're going to have to be careful. Maybe we need to trade up. I don't know. We'll, we'll keep an eye on what the, the rest of the teams are doing. Couple corners off the board now. There goes Mark Cutler. Romeo Wall goes off. Jeff Spears. It wasn't that strong of a of a pass rush class, so I'm not really worried there. There goes Elliot Kincaid. Do we have to worry? No, he was round three to four. We don't have to worry about him. Yeah, he's round three to four. Not in the first round, at least. Oh, man. I really want to get at least two of these other guards because or other offensive linemen because they look really, really good. But Emmanuel Farr, you are our dude. I'm coming for you in your big meatball. We're at pick 18, the Chicago Bears. Duh, Bears. They take Darren Payton, or Deron Payton, Walter's nephew. Ron Springs, Antoine Gatewood, Christopher Bass, Kerry Thompson, and now we... Oh, I almost skipped. That would have been bad. Okay, so if we make our selection now, 
we could probably take one of those left tackles. They're probably still both here. Yes, they both are. But is that where we go with it? I don't think so. Also, this guy, George Lang, I mean, I know we're uh, kind of like overlooking him. He also looks very good. He's got good numbers. So there's three possible guys here. Or we could trade back and get another first round pick for next year. You know I like to trade around, get picks for, for, previous, or for next seasons. Make sure that we're all stocked up. So if we trade back, is anybody willing to give me two first round picks? Probably not. No, it doesn't look like it. So when is our, let me quickly check when our second round pick is. It's pick five. Okay, so if we trade this pick away, we have the potential to still get one of our guys. We have a lot of second round picks too, don't forget that. I want to trade back to the 2026 draft. It's just looking for what gives me the best stuff. We could trade with the Ravens, but the Ravens are probably going to be pretty good again. I mean, they just won the Super Bowl, so I don't really want to trade with the team that just won the Super Bowl. But the teams that are bad aren't really giving me anything great. The Bills are offering me first round pick next year and a third round pick next year. I don't hate that. That might end up being the best offer. Because everybody else is either offering me first round picks. I think the Bills are the, are the best offer. We're going to trade with the Bills, pick up a first round pick next year and a third round pick that next year. And we'll go to our second round pick because we have a bunch of them. Ladarius Upshaw goes to the Bills. Mario Charles heads to the Chargers. Jonathan Gabriel, Zaire Fuller, Jerry Wilson. We're getting close to the second round here. Will Oliver goes. Quinton Silvers. Nick Lindstrom out of Duke. The next Daniel Jones. Luke Dillinger goes. Monte Fox. Now we're into the second round. Oh, there goes George Lang. So that's one of the offensive linemen that I was looking at. Dudley Weaver. Kerry Bryant out of Wisconsin. And then Javante Walters. So we have, I think, three second round picks this in this round. Three picks in this round, I should say. So if I'm going to get any of these guards, I got to do it now. Or any of these offensive linemen, I got to do it now. One of the second round picks, I'm going to take Emmanuel Farr. Probably the next one after this. But who is the best one out of these guys left? Is it Jaleel Culver? Jaleel Culver? It could be. He looks like a really good athlete, and he's got A awareness, A impact block, some decent run block stuff. What about Peter McIntosh? How good is he? Not as good of an athlete. I think Jaleel Culver is the better of the two options. We will take Jaleel with this second round pick. He's only in normal development, which is kind of shocking to me. But he looks pretty good, 85 acceleration, 77 jumping, 71 agility, 87 strength. Maybe we can move one of our picks from last year that we had at tackle. Maybe we can move them into guard and then put him at left tackle. That's a possibility. Justin Jarrett goes. We took a look at him. Braden Butler. Jalen Dunn. Manick Green goes. Steven Waters. Hardly know her. Vince McMillan. Michael Costa. Sean Claiborne. Jonathan Wilkins. So that other guy must not be favored very well because he's still dropping. There goes Kevin Hood, Quinton, Witch Quinton Richmond, Terrell Love. Ooh, back-to-back second-round picks. That's useful. There goes Peter McIntosh. So that was the other tackle that we were debating. He almost made it to us. So now we have our picks. I'm going to use one of these on Emmanuel Farr just to guarantee that we get him because he's going to be that good. So Emmanuel Farr... Welcome to the team. Don't even have to second guess it. Hidden development. He's our franchise center. No doubt about it. 86 acceleration. 91 strength. He is the franchise center. He looks like a big meatball. And now with this pick, we could either take another offensive lineman or trade back and get even more picks. And you know I love me some picks. Picks? So we could trade back and get a second round pick and a fifth round pick, which would not be... bad but we could also get Ooh, thank you vegas a second and a fourth might be the go-to move let's do it <coughs> two picks next year thank you very much and we have a pick in the third round next 
I like that deal. So now we have two first round picks, two second round picks, and two third round picks next season. I like the way that our season or our next season draft is shaping up. And I think the only other guys that we need to take is maybe one more offense lineman and then that kicker. That is all we need to do in this draft. So I guess we could just skip to our next pick. I don't think we need to just uh, go pick by pick here. Make our selection. Is there anybody on our board available besides the kicker? Corey Rich. I actually liked Corey Rich. I didn't think he was a great athlete. But he was good enough. I think we're going to take him. He's only normal development, but so was that other guard that we took. And it doesn't hurt to have guard depth. And with our third round pick, our other third round pick, we are going to take that kicker just because... I know he's going to be there late in the rounds, but he's a franchise kicker. We're going to take him. Cody Bruce, he's got great to elite kick power. He's got elite kick power. Yes, sir. This guy's going to be a monster. Welcome to the squad. Only normal development. But 97 kick power is insane for a rookie kicker. Welcome to the squad, my homie. And now we will trade the rest of our picks. Let's see what everybody's offering us. A third round pick from the Bucks. Thank you very much. I will take that without question. Now we go to the fifth round. And we've got probably some fourth round picks, I would guess. Maybe. Yep, there's a fourth round. I don't want to take it from the Bucks. We've already taken picks from the Bucks. We'll get one from the 49ers. I don't want to ruin the Tampa Bay's, uh, the Bucks' future by taking all their picks away. Picks. So we are into the sixth round. We got a couple of six round picks. Not a big deal because we'll take this from the Broncos. I appreciate you. And now we will skip ahead to our next pick. And we will trade with the Jets. They'll give us a sixth round pick. I could have got a fifth round pick, but that's okay. We don't really need a bunch of picks in the late rounds because we're just going to trade them back anyway, so it's not a big deal. And we will trade with the Commanders. And we have one final pick. Pick 30 in the draft. We'll trade it away. And we will get back a Patriots 2026 seventh round pick. That is completely fine. And now that's our draft. You know what? We didn't get the development traits that I was looking for. I would have wished that maybe more of our offense alignment had development traits. But all in all, I think we had a fantastic draft. Plus, we have plenty of money to work with, so it's not like that. 74 overall for Jerry Hawkins. 72 for Julio Culliver. He was the one I was kind of upset didn't have any development trait. Emmanuel Farr going to be our franchise center, no doubt. 73 overall. Corey Rich is a 73 as well. He doesn't have a development trait. And neither does Cody Bruce, but he's a 71. What's his kick accuracy? Because we know he's got 97 power. He has, if we can get to it in time, where's it at? Is it all the way at the bottom? Kick power. Here we go. We're getting close to it, I think. Did I pass it? I did pass it. So his, oh, no, that's his physical grade. Where is his kick power at? Oh, here's his accuracy. So he's got an accuracy of 71. That's not great. But if he develops, he could be an absolute freaking stud. I'm happy with it. I do kind of want to know how good those pass rushers were, those outside linebackers. So let's go see how good the rest of the class was. So 77 was the highest in the class. That's not that good. So we didn't really miss out on anything crazy. And none of those top picks were at the top. So Ben Covington, the first overall pick, is a 76 overall. And then pick two is a 75. So we didn't really miss out on much. I knew they weren't going to be that great. I feel like we had a really good class. I feel like we had a really, really good class. I'm happy about next season. I think that this team... Do I think this team is ready? Like I was saying earlier in the video. It's up for debate. I don't know if we're ready to go. I mean, we just had a pretty bad season. And we're coming off of that. But headed into year four in the next episode. This is what the offense will look like. Najee Harris and Antonio Gibson... Malcolm Ogletree in year two. Still looking for wide receivers. Who's this guy? Oh, that's the tight end. <laughs> I thought that for a second he was a, a wide receiver, but uh, I just got confused because uh, what's his face? Or because we don't have very much wide receiver depth. But I'm going to actually start him at, at starting tight end. Oh, he can't because he's starting at fullback. Okay, so we'll have uh, Williams be the starting fullback. That's fine. And then we'll have Hawkins be the starting tight end. I may need to go into the actual depth chart and work on... Uh, this offensive line, but right now it looks to be pretty good. We've got Knox. We've, ah, oh man, this offensive line is going to be so good in a couple years. 
It's going to be so good. There's our there's Culver, our second round pick. Defensively, we've got some need at middle linebacker. Jalen Phillips and Logan Wilson are going to be pretty good. We still need some work on the defensive line. The corners are looking a little bit better and the safeties are okay. The team still needs some work, but as of right now, I really like I like the offense a lot more than I like the defense. And it was completely flipped the opposite way at the end of last episode. I like the defense a lot more than I like the offense, but I think we did pretty good. So that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Let me know down below in the comments if you thought that uh, we did pretty good in the draft and the entire offseason as a whole. I do know that we have some holes still, obviously. We still need some linebackers. We still need some corners. We still need some receivers. We still need uh, some some defense alignment, both pass rushers and just interior. So there's still a lot of holes. But if you look, we have an 81 offense, 85 defense, 82 overall. I don't think we're ready this year in next episode. I don't think we're ready to win a Super Bowl or at least even make the playoffs. But another year of development for Malcolm Ogletree, another year of free agency and offseason work and draft. Then in, in episode five, we could certainly see some mass improvements. I'm hoping that's the case. That's going to do it for me, though. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I truly appreciate it, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.